Hi, this is Linda Mullen with Back to the Beach Software, and I'm here to introduce you to Web Studio 5.0. We're going to cover three sections today the Web Studio workspace and features so that you know how to navigate around the program and find the commands that you want. The second thing I'm going to be showing you is where to get help with Web Studio. And the third part of our demonstration, which will be the largest part, I'm going to actually build a two page website, link it together, and show you how to upload it to the internet. So let's get started. I want you to notice that the largest part of the program is the actual workspace itself where you're going to build your web pages. A website is really a series of individual web pages that are linked together and uploaded to the internet. You can have as many web pages as you want in your website and you can also have as many web pages as you want in an individual project. Each website that you design with Web Studio is going to be saved in its own project on your folders on your computer. The file extension for your project will be OWS. It's a really good idea for you to create a folder for your website so that you always know where they are. And it's a really good idea for you to name each one of your website projects with the same name as the URL so that you can always find your project. Over here on the right hand side is the page list that shows all of the pages that I have so far in this particular project. If I want to add a page, I can just click on this button and a new untitled page comes in. It's added to the page list and it's also added up here on the tabs. When you have a lot of pages in your project, it's a good idea to close some of your tabs because that saves computer memory. It will be much faster for you to design. You can always open your page again by double clicking on it. Over on the left hand side are the galleries. Within the galleries there are graphics, there's buttons, there's backgrounds, there's different things that you can use to build your project. You click on a gallery tab and underneath the tab you'll notice that the little icons may have another folder here. That's an indicator that there's some more things in that particular section, so just double click on it and that'll show you more content. Now when you want to take something out of a gallery, you move your mouse over the item, press your left mouse button down and hold it. You'll notice that your cursor changes a little bit. Drag it all the way out onto your page and then drop it by releasing your left mouse button. That's called drag and drop. You're going to use drag and drop a lot with Web Studio. You're going to use it every time you want to move something around. I'm going to press the left, left mouse button right now, hold it down, and drag this photo around. When I want to leave it, I just release my mouse button. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go to the Home tab and Clear. Which brings us to the ribbon at the top of the page. The ribbon replaces some of the menus that you're familiar with in some other programs and each tab has the commands underneath with little icons to make all of the commands visually easy to find. You'll also notice that when you click on a tab the commands are grouped together in little boxes. At the end of each group is an arrow at the very right hand corner. If you click that arrow what you'll see a tutorial for how to use the commands within that arrow. It opens right within your workspace and I've turned down the audio so that it won't interfere with us right now but it does have audio as well as visual. I'm going to close this out. Up on the upper left hand corner is the Web Studio button that contains some more commands but you'll be going here primarily to open the options dialog and this is where you can set some global preferences for Web Studio. On the right hand side is the website properties dialog and we're going to be using that later when we upload the website to the internet. I'll be showing you how to use that. If however you come into the program and you can't find your website properties dialog button, it just means that the caption bar is hidden. So go to view, click on caption bar, and you'll see the properties dialog again. I want to talk a little bit about where you can get help with Web Studio. I've already told you about the in-program video tutorials. I'm going to click on the Home tab right now and go to the far right hand side. 
and show you that your online PDF manual is located here. You can open that up, you can save it to your hard drive, you can leave it right here. There's a link to our online wiki. There's a link to Web Studio TV, which is where you can get some information. We post announcements. We have our latest build at Web Studio TV. It's a separate website that we have online. This is our main website, webstudio.com. And also in the help area, you're going to find the information about the build that you're using. I'm using 5.0, build 23. Right now I'm going to open our online wiki because you're going to be spending a lot of time here to get information and articles about how to use Web Studio. This is a wonderful resource for you to have when you first come to the online wiki which is located at wiki.webstudio.com. You'll see that there's a search box at the top where you can search for articles. When you use that search box try to keep your search very narrow. For instance if your question is about links just put in the word links and it'll bring up all the articles about links. The other thing about the wiki is that on the left hand side is a topical index. So when you're first starting to use Web Studio, why don't you come over here and click getting started and you'll be able to see a lot of the articles that we have on getting started with Web Studio. Each of the articles within the wiki bring you has a link that brings you right back to the home page. If you want help with design or you want some custom design templates for your website, you can click to go to our Web Studio template store where we have designers who have done custom design work and you can purchase some templates for your website at a very reasonable price. The last thing I want to mention to you is the Web Studio forum. That's a place where all of our users get together. You can post questions, get help with third-party software, and when you're done with your website, before you upload it, you can even submit it to the forum and they'll look at it and check it for you and see if they have any tips before it goes online. All right, let's get started with building the website. I want to show you screenshots of where we're going so that you know what it's going to look like when it's done. Our website's going to have a little bit of a checkered background and this is going to be what the home page looks like and this is the second page. I built the agenda using the, the basic design of the website and you'll notice that some of the letters here look a little grainy. You may be wondering about that. That happens while you're working on the project but you can look and see what your website is going to look like at any time in a browser by going up here to the preview command and your web page will be placed inside a browser and you can see how nice and clean everything looks. You know that you're in preview because the tab comes up and it's labeled preview. If you're in preview by mistake you'll notice that no matter how many times you click around you can't seem to do any work on the page. It's because you're in preview. So get rid of that by clicking on the X to go back to your page. I chose a color scheme before I started because it makes it easier for me as a designer to know what colors I'm using and I'm going to make a copy of this color scheme and put it on the web page as we start designing. I'm going to minimize this right now and I'm going to open up the Web Studio program and when it opens you'll notice that the workspace is black because we don't have any projects open. I can go to the open tab and open a, a project I've already been working on but right now I'm going to start a new project. The new project comes in with one page, it's untitled, and it has a little house icon next to the page. This indicates that this page is my home page. Every website must have a home page, and every website can only have one home page. When you upload your website to the internet, the home page is what people will see when they first go to your website and all the pages that you want in your website have to be linked in some way to this home page or they won't be able to be seen. I'm going to start by renaming the home page. Now what I'm going to be doing right now is I am building a landscape website. So I'm going to call this landscape home. 
try not to name your page just home. Try to give it a name that describes the kind of website that you're going to have and the kind of website that you're building. The first thing I want to do is put in a background and I'm going to use a background from the gallery. I've already chosen uh, the background that I want to use. I'm going to scroll down here and it has a little folder so I'm going to double click on it and I want you to notice that this background comes in a variety of colors as do all of the backgrounds within the program and I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to click with my left mouse button, hold down the mouse, drag it and drop it onto the screen. Now that I have a home page that's been renamed and a background on my page, I'm going to save the project. It is so important to save the project often while you're working. You never know what your computer is going to do. So I'm going to call this landscape and save it. You'll notice now that at the top of my screen my project is now called landscape. The next thing I'm going to do is start by doing the banner. First of all I'm going to go back to that other project off screen and I'm going to copy that color scheme piece and I'm going to bring it over here by pasting. So I'm going to go over here. Actually, I'm going to go back to my backgrounds because this is feeling a little dark to me. And I can change the background anytime I want. I'm going to make the background a little lighter. There, that feels better. I'm going to go up to the Draw tab. I'm going to get a rectangle shape. and this is a good time to talk to you about the page guides. These guides are there to help me see where I should lay out my graphics and objects on the page. They don't prevent me from going outside of the of the lines, but they do help me keep all of my pages cohesive so that when people are visiting my website they can go from one page to the other and all of them are the same width. If you make your website too wide, it means that visitors are going to have to scroll from right to left and they don't like to do that. People are used to scrolling up and down, but they're not used to scrolling left to right. So I'm going to put my rectangle here. Now my rectangle comes in with these little handles. I can move them side to side, back and forth to resize everything. Now what I want to do is make this the, the color green that I want to have on the top of my banner. So I click this little, eye, this little eyedropper and I move it to my color scheme and I click here and then I say OK. Now I can change that any time by going back to fill color, choosing the eyedropper, clicking on it, choosing another color. But right now I'm going to go back to green, fill color, eyedropper, green. And I don't want it to have a border, so I'm going to go to border width and choose none. Now I want a rectangle in the middle. And I'm going to take another one, move it over, resize it. And this time you'll notice it covered up my color scheme. So I'm going to go to Page Layout. And I know that my rectangle is selected because it has some handles here. And I'm going to send it to the back. When you put objects on your web page, all of the objects come in in layers. You can take an object and move it forward or backward through the layers. That way you can have things overlap. For instance, this can overlap on the top of here, but it's under there. If I want this to be in front of every th everyone, I just click on it to select it, and I move it to the front. When I click on an object, it selects it. When I click on a blank spot on the background, it deselects it. Another way I can select objects is by selecting more than one. 
I can do that by holding down the shift key on the keyboard and clicking on each individual object. Now they are all selected and now they're all moving. I click on a blank spot of the background to deselect. Another way I can select more than one object is to go to a blank spot on the background, click with my left mouse button, hold it down, and drag it so that a rectangle touches all of the things I want to select. When I remove my finger from the mouse button, everything is selected. So I'm going to deselect this for a moment, move this down, and change the color of this rectangle because I would like this one to be that lighter color. Now on this website, I'm going to let the background do like a peekaboo through the design. And I'm going to go on to design the rest of this banner. I'm going to take the fill color on this rust color here and make it a little darker. I'm just doing this as a design element. It's really not going to have anything on it. I'm going to send it to the back and I want a little bit more of it showing so I'll move it down and I'm using the arrow key on the keyboard to do that. The last thing I'm going to do with this banner right now is I'm going to go to this top green one and have it touch the lines. Now the other thing I can do is I can have this go all the way to the top. The dotted lines have a little space around them and that's a little margin. And when I bring my website onto the internet, I'm going to show you, this banner is going to go all the way to the top. I'm going to click out of here and show you that if I bring it within the margins, when it goes on the internet, it'll have a little space on the top. Sometimes you may want to do that because you might want to put some text links in, but I don't. I want to have mine go all the way to the top. I want to mention at this time, this is a great thing to do while you're designing. Go to this preview. Do I like what I'm doing? Yes. Okay, I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to save my project. I'm going to do this often. Now the way I'm going to have this is I want this white creamy one here and then this will be toward the bottom. But I want them to be all the same width and I want them to be the width of the top banner. So I'm going to click on that first. Remember that the object that gets clicked on first is the boss. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key, click on the next two objects, go to page layout, and make them all the same width. Then I'm going to go over here and have them all aligned to the left. Now they look really good. I'm going to save this, check it in the browser everything looks very even and close out of the browser. The next thing I want to do is go over here and make, go bring you back here so I can show you, I want to make these three design features and I've made them out of one photograph. Go to insert picture. That lets me insert an image from my files. Now I've got several images and I'm going to go to the extra large icons and I'm going to choose this one. And I am going to resize it to 600 pixels. This is a very large photograph. Now I'm going to show you how to crop. The first thing you want to do is select the photo so that there's the handles are showing on around all the sides. Then I'm going to hold down the C key, C for Charlie, on my keyboard. When I move the cursor, when it turns to a double arrow, I'm going to press my left mouse button and drag this line and you can see where this photo will be cropped. 
release the mouse button first and then the C key. I'm going to do it again on the other side. I'm going to hold down the C key again and actually I didn't have to pick it up if I was going to do more cropping. Move that over and that's pretty much the size that I want to have it. Maybe a little bit more cropping on this side so it doesn't take up too much room. I want to divide this into threes so I'm going to copy and paste so that I have three copies of this. The easiest way to do this is to hold down the control key on the keyboard, click and drag, and that makes a copy. Now if I hold down the control key and I just click without dragging, I will get a copy, but it'll be underneath and it'll be hidden. So whenever you want to make a copy, you want to control, click, and drag. Now I'm going to take each one of these sections, hold down the C key, and I'm going to crop the photo. Because I want a top, a bottom, and a middle. I'm going to move them over here and I want to make them equal size. Because this is a flower, when I resize, if they get a little unusual, it doesn't matter, it's not a person's face. So I'm going to click on this first one, hold down the shift key and click the other two, go to page layout and click equal size. Now I want to put a little design element behind them, so I'm going to go to the draw tab Pick a shape, a rectangle, and I want the fill color with the eyedropper to match this cream. But this time I'm going to put a border around it. So the border color eyedropper is going to match this border. Even though I've chosen a border color, I don't see a border yet because I don't have a width to my border. I want the border to be a little wider than that, so I'm going to choose three. I'm going to move this over here just to work on it. And move this over and resize it. Move this to the back. Now if I wanted to, I could actually resize this very specifically by double clicking on this object and finding out exactly how large it is. And then double clicking on the other object and choosing a size that would be maybe five pixels larger. I like the way that looks. I know that all my other ones are the same size so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to copy and paste it. This time I'm going to use my control C and my control V. I'm going to click to select both of these items, go to page layout and make sure that they're centered vertically and horizontally. If I want to, since these are both already selected, I can go to create and merge them together so that they're one piece. Now I'm going to do the other two. I'm going to click and drag to select both of them, center them horizontally and vertically, then I'm going to go to the Create tab and Merge. You don't have to merge them, I'm just doing this because it's a little easier for me right now center horizontally and vertically, create tab, merge, and position them on the page. Doesn't matter what order you build your website, 
you can do anything you like at any time you like and change anything you like. While I'm down here I'm going to put another shape and it just so happens that the color that I'm going to use is the one that's on here already so I don't have to do any changing to that and I'm going to use this to put footer links on later resizing everything. Let's go up and put some text on our page. Go to the text tab. There's several ways you can bring in a text object. You can come over here and click new text object and I'm going to call this West Coast. Now it comes in with about font 10. The color is black. I'm moving it over here so you can see it and I'm going to double click on it to put it into editing mode and you can tell it's in editing mode when the background changes color. I'm going to select my text and the way that I do that is by pressing my left mouse button, dragging to the left and I'm going to come up here to the size. 26 is not big enough. I'll do 36 and I'm going to choose a different color and the color for text works just like any other color. I'm going to go to the eyedropper, select this text, say OK, click out here to deselect it and move it up. Let's see what it looks like so far. I like that. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to save it. Let's put in another text object. This one's going to be landscaping. Double click and I am going to make this very large. I'm going to choose the eyedropper and I'm going to choose the banner color and then come to custom and make it lighter. I want it to look a little shadowy on the page. Now notice that the words are cut off and that's just because the text object needs to be made larger. When you click on a text object without editing you get the same selection handles that you get on anything else and you click, hold your mouse button and drag. Make it a lot larger than the words are. Some of the browsers, for instance Internet Explorer, if the words are too cramped in your text object, they'll throw off what the text object looks like. So I'm going to put that up here because I'm going to need room for my buttons and I'm going to put one more text object in that has my telephone number. I'm going to make that a nice size so people can read it. I'm going to move it over to the right and I'm going to choose the eyedropper to make it the cream color and then move it over. Now in the interest of time I have made some text objects for this page in another program or another project I should say. It is a Web Studio program but it's just in another project and that's just to make it a little easier to get through the tutorial. You can copy and paste from any place and I'm just realigning everything here. I want to put a little arrow on my page so I'm going to go to the graphics and double click on the arrow selection and find a nice arrow. I like this color. I'm going to drag and drop that arrow onto the page but it's facing the wrong direction. So I'm going to go to the create tab, special effects, and reverse it. Move it up here and I'm going to control click drag 
to make another copy. I want to put a line under here, so I'm going to go to the Draw tab, use my rectangle. I'm going to change the fill color to black, remove the border, and this time I'm going to double click on this because I want a one pixel line and I'm going to choose one. Now if I wanted to do something and keep the resizing proportional, I would just click that box, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just click OK and I have a one pixel line that I can now move around with the arrows on my keyboard. I'm going to save. The next thing I want to do is get some buttons on my page and I want to go back again to the screenshots to point something out to you. When I do buttons or any kind of navigation, I like one part of them to be a different color so that the, when I'm visiting a website, I like to know what page I'm on. The home page has a different button than the other pages do and when I'm over here on the services page, that has a different button. Now I know when I'm a viewer that I'm on the services portion. So let me minimize that again. And I'm going to go over to the buttons. And I'm going to scroll down to this smooth looking button here. And find I'll move this one out. When the buttons come out, the Button Studio opens automatically. I'm going to call this button Home. And I want you to notice that there's three windows. I can have my button change color when the mouse is moved over it. And I'm going to do that because I want people to see a different color. I want to keep my font flat, but I do want to have a different color. And I'm going to move that down on top of that light colored bar, save my project, and see what that looks like in the browser. Now I can't test links here, but I can test color. And I like the way that looks. One of the things that I noticed when I was in looking at the preview is that the button looked a little grainy. So I want to change it to perfect quality. And let me show you how I got there. I right click on the button, select properties, go to graphic, and choose perfect quality from this drop down menu. Let's go back up to preview and this time the button doesn't look grainy at all. I'm going to save the project. Now I need another button. I need a green one. I think this green looks like it would work so I'm going to drag this one out. And this one is going to be called services. I'm going to make these flat. For this, I'm going to just make it lighter so that when the mouse is over it, it has a little lighter look. And I'm going to change the text color because the button is a little bit dark and I'm going to select that cream color. I'm going to right click over this button, choose properties, and change the graphic to perfect quality. Move it over and look at it in the window to see what it looks like. I like the way that looks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my services button, control click drag, 
control click drag. I'm going to keep the button that I already made because I like the font color, I like the way it looks when it's in preview, and so I'm going to double click to reopen the button studio and I'm just going to change the name. I can do this because I haven't put any links on here yet, so I'm not going to confuse anything. This is really an easy way to duplicate your buttons after they're made. Now I'm going to place one here where I want it to the far right, place one here to the far left, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on all the buttons. Go back to page layout and align the bottoms so that they're all the same height, and then I'm going to space them horizontally. Now they look good on the page. I'm going to save this, check it in preview. Alright, now we're going to go to the second page. The easiest way for me to do the second page is to really just duplicate the page that I have right now, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on Home and duplicate this page. I'm going to rename it Services and click OK. A lot of this is going to go away, but it's a whole lot easier to just remove some of it. When I'm designing websites, I like to do this. This time I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to leave the telephone number down here, but I want the banner to be a little narrower. And I'm going to select everything that's on the banner. And this time, instead of using arrows, I'm going to use my cursor to just drag everything to the top. Now I'm going to go back home and I want to choose this one and I'm going to copy it, control C, go to services page, control V to paste it. And what I'd like to do with this is make it very transparent. So I'm going to go to the create tab, click on opacity and reduce the opacity. I'm going to crop the edges. And give myself a new shape for underneath. With a border color. resize it. And I like the way that that looks. I'm going to move it up a little bit so it's centered. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to put the company name on top of this little logo here. And I've already pre-made some of the text. This time I'm going to make this rectangle a little bit of a different size because this is the services page and we do other things on this page than we did on the home page. Let me get rid of that line. I moved out, I moved the rectangle away so that I could select that little tiny one pixel line. Let's get some more photos in here of flowers because this is a landscaper. And I'm going to select three pictures to bring in right now. You can select more than uh, one file to bring in at the same time. 
and I'm going to resize them all to about 300 pixels. I can still resize them after they come in, but it's just a little easier to do this. I'm going to crop this one and resize it. And I'm going to resize this one. If you put your cursor at the corner until you get the double arrow, you can resize it proportionately. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to come over here and make a little box for this guy to live in for a special announcement. Put another line in. And you can see when you really get going with these tools, it's very fast. I can get rid of my color scheme now. And I'm going to bring in some text objects that I've already made. And I'm also going to bring in the buttons that I made. On this page I have the services button as the one that's a different color. I'm going to line them up horizontally and everything on the bottom is lined up. Now one of the things that you might have on a website is footer links. And those are the little tiny links that are put on the bottom of your website that show all the pages that you have in your website. I'm not going to build the photos and the contact page, but I am going to add two pages so that you can see what they look like. Photos. Contact. Now if I go to Landscape Home and I go to Insert Footer Links, it puts these links at the bottom of my page and I want you to notice that there's a big red box around them. That red box will not show up on the internet. And it's actually a feature that you can turn on or off. If you go up to the View tab, I have selected to highlight objects with links. I can select Don't Highlight, but it's nice when you're checking to make sure that your links are on to turn it on at least momentarily. For now, I'll say Don't Highlight. I'll go to the Services and insert footer links down here. I wanted to add the other pages so that you could see that Web Studio automatically puts all of the pages in your project down here. Now if you have some extra pages and you don't want them to be in footer links, you right click on the name of that page and you uncheck include in footer links. Also notice that our links are underlined and they're colored red. I can select them go to the Web Studio button, click on Options, and I can change all of those options in this dialog. But now we're going to go back to the home page and we're going to put links on the buttons. If you're using the same buttons on every single page, you can just put the links on the first buttons and then copy and paste those buttons onto the other pages. I'm changing the color of my buttons, that's why I'm doing it individually. Linking is so easy. You click on links in the gallery and you'll notice that under the first 
section is site links and it has the names of all of my pages. I'm going to left click, hold down the mouse button and drag landscape home onto the home button. As you can see the link is applied because there's that red line. That's what's nice about that red line. Services, photos, contact. Home, services, photos, contact. That's how easy linking is. Now I'm going to save the project and I want to test the links before I actually put them up on the internet. So I'm going to go to the preview upload host button and there's a couple of things you can do. You can trial host your website with iHost Studio or you can come over here and use live site and that's what I'm going to use right now. When you click on live site it places your website in your browser for 48 hours. You can copy the link and you can share it with other people your site has been successfully uploaded to Cumulus Content. Here's my website. This is where I want to check my links. If I click on Services, do I go there? If I click on Home, do I go back? Up here is the URL that you can copy and paste into an email. If you're working with a client, they can send them this link. They can click on the link and see what their website looks like. I always have my client proofread the website. I'm going to click out of there and I really like the way this looks so I'm going to upload the website. The first thing I need to tell Web Studio is am I using iHost Studio for my hosting or am I using another host? I happen to be using another host so I'm going to click use another host. Then I'm going to go over to website properties I'm going to open this up and I'm going to type in website address for my website. Now I know that I created a project just now called Landscape, but I actually have a real website address called Web Studio Test. I type that in and I click OK. Now that I've told Web Studio that I'm using another host and that my website is webstudiotest.com. Now I can upload my website. So I'm going to click Upload Website. And the first thing I want to do is connect to the internet and tell Web Studio where my website is going. Now mine is already populated, but I'm going to go over what you need for this. And we do have an uploading uh, training session online that you can look at. This is the name of my website. It's webstudiotest.com is the FTP address. My user login is an abbreviated Web Studio. I have a password. Make sure this is saved. Root directory, website address, and I click OK. When, once you've clicked OK, you notice all of the things that are on this website. Now, previously, I uploaded an entirely different website to Web Studio Test and because this is up there you're seeing some files that you normally don't see. The first time that you upload a new website from Web Studio to the Internet you want to make sure that you click upload all pages so that it completely takes down the previous website and uploads all of your pages that you're going to use. You also want to upload all pages when you make a change like adding a page or deleting a page. Any major changes always upload all your pages. Once you do that you're going to have a dialogue that comes up while your website is being built. You may sometimes see a dialogue that says Web Studio has stopped working. What that is really saying to you is Web Studio is very busy right now. You cannot go back and make any changes to your website on your pages because we are busy uploading your website. Once it's uploaded, I'm going to go to View Site to see what my website looks like, and there it is. That's how easy it is to build a website and get it up on the Internet using Web Studio. I click Done, and I'm finished. I can come in any time fix my website, go back to that uploader, and upload that website again. 
you may notice that when you upload a website for the first time, it's going to take the servers sometimes up to two weeks to find you. So even though you'll type in your address and can go to it, if you try to Google search yourself within two hours, you're not going to see yourself yet because it's going to take a couple of weeks. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. Please watch the other ones that we have online, and I'd like to thank you for joining us.